Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we'll start with the New York Times and an article from the director of the Center for Climate Change and Development at the Federal University in Nigeria. Several environmentalists last year presented Africa's leading climate negotiators with a bold idea. A technology called solar geoengineering could protect their countries from the worst effects of climate change, they said. While insisting they were impartial, representatives from the Carnegie Climate Governance Initiative, and we'll just check that impartiality claim. So Carnegie, as you know, is where Ken Caldera operates out from, and his project Pfizer, and Carnegie's Ken, as well as David Keith from now the University of Chicago, sort of also Harvard, we can see there in 2012 when they were at the University of Calgary that research grants were gifted to them by Mr Bill Gates and that was from his personal funds and not from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Pfizer is not a foundation project and has no relationship with it. This was purely from Bill Gates's personal pocket and we know that from 2012. What is the source and the size of the fund they received? Who administers the fund? Since its inception in 2007, Pfizer has given out grants to 13 research projects. Internationally known climate scientist Dr David Keith of the Uni of Calgary and Ken Caldera of the Carnegie Institution. So repeat that, Ken Caldera of the Carnegie Institution selects projects that receive support from the fund. Mr Gates provides input from time to time, but Drs Keith and Caldera make final decisions on the projects. And there's the Carnegie Climate Governance Initiative insisting they are impartial. In the information section of this video, I'll put a link to the website where all the projects are, where you can see what Bill Gates' involvement is there in various projects, such as the Silver Lining Project, etc. Carnegie is not impartial in the geoengineering conversation or climate modification conversation. So the so-called impartial representatives from Carnegie said that these technologies, which claim to be able to re-engineer the climate itself, either by dimming the sun's rays or reflecting sunlight away from the earth, could quickly and cheaply turn the tide of dangerously rising temperatures, and that poor countries might, might have the most to gain. So further on, he states, in May, another international non-profit, the Climate Overshoot Commission, headquartered in Paris, is hosting an event in Nairobi, Kenya, to help drum up support. Let's hope he manages to speak in Nairobi. <laughs> so the Climate Overshoot Commission, headquartered in Paris, Africa, HEC Paris, launches Green Entrepreneurship Programme, and this is from 2020 in June. This involved climate destruction labs and they put out a call for people to get involved in geoengineering. Back to the New York Times article from the wise man in Nigeria. A quote, as a climate expert, I consider these environmental manipulation techniques extremely risky. And as an African climate expert, I strongly object to the idea that Africa should be turned into a testing ground for their use. Well said. And that is the key words, testing ground, which is what these organisations want to do. It, it is slowly being pushed into Africa, the Caribbean, small island developing states. And yet when, it, when they try and do this in their own backyard, i.e. what's happened in the UK in Norfolk about 12 years ago, David Keefe's experiment was cancelled. Then again, in Sweden a couple of years ago, where the Sami tribe stopped the experiments. They do seem to go ahead with ease in the United States of America. Mexico recently found out that an American entrepreneur had carried out unlicensed tests, just turned up in Mexico and started doing stuff, and they've banned, or they're banning geoengineering, albeit whilst they are carrying out weather modifications. They've banned climate modification but are doing weather modification hmm. go figure so there are countries that will be targeted for these experiments 
because people will make money out of letting it happen to start with. The more desperate people are for money, the more likely they are to say yes to something going on, especially if they're handed a suitcase full of money under the table. The world isn't stupid. We know how this system works. We know how things get done. So be wise in the decisions you make on this subject. If you need any convincing, we can always talk about Italy's weather modification project in North Italy. But well done to that university in Nigeria for getting the word out there. Let's move over to the United States now. Arizona. Cloud seeding potential exists in Arizona per new report. The Salt River project is studying the feasibility of winter cloud seeding in the White Mountains. So according to the article, it's not happening yet in Arizona, but cloud seeding is already making an impact in the state. It's a slightly contradictory sentence. If it's already making an impact in the state, how is it not happening yet? <laughs> that does not make sense. I'll put a link to Arizona in the info section where you can see some history of Arizona's weather modification projects. Arizona's weather is well and truly modified. In this article, they go through a process explaining what it is, as most articles do. It's definitely not happening, blah, blah, blah. So we look at the Journal of the Irrigation and Drainage Division, 1970, so 53 years ago now. The paper presented here is an interim progress review for the period ending with the fourth summer season at Flagstaff. For those of you that don't know, Flagstaff is in Arizona. In 1967, so three years before this report, 56 years ago, randomised seeding of isolated cumulus clouds was the main experiment. So fast forward back to today where they're saying it's not happening. Yeah, so this is the typical way of presenting information on this subject. It's not happening because of a certain project name or a certain area, or it's called a test or an experiment or research, and then everything stays separated. Whereas obviously you know that from the information just presented to you, it's been going on since 1967. A test here, an experiment there but it soon mounts up to decades worth and the collective assumption from that is Arizona's weather is well and truly modified. The Central Arizona project is mentioned there. It says their strategy is several decades old and has been used frequently in other western states. So it's longer than a century in places like Italy. Italy are up to 120 years worth of weather modification. Germany is 100 years more or less but in america the strategy is several decades old suggesting 30 or 40 years not 60 70 80. it has been used frequently in other western states but not arizona which we've just shown is a complete lie interesting sentence in this it's being done the salt river project from the central arizona project is being done in partnership with the white mountain apache tribe I have reached out to the tribe to ask for more detail on that partnership. Is it just permission to use the land for generators or to do this over tribe land? Or has there been any financial compensation paid to the tribe to carry out this project? So I reached out to the Environmental Protection Office from the White Mountain Apache Tribe and that was to all three email addresses given program director, air quality technician and outreach coordinator. So I'll let you know if I get any response on that. Over to Saudi Arabia, where a project manager for cloud seeding operations in Saudi Arabia is being asked for by Weather Modification LLC, who you know is in Fargo, North Dakota, United States. So Weather Modification Incorporated International, what have you, recently expanded into the state of Washington, United States, are definitely expanded into Saudi Arabia. Space, from the TS2 website, the advancements in satellite technology for space-based weather modification. It's gonna happen sooner or later, let's be honest. The technology is advancing and is a lot further than what was going on in 1947 in American labs, always has been. 
This headline will give you the impression that it's about space-based weather modification. The vast majority of the article is about analysing data, weather data, to assist in Earth-based weather modification. It's a ground-based aeroplane. And that becomes a bit more clearer when you see how, our, how artificial intelligence and machine learning are revolutionising weather modification using satellites. AI and machine learning are being used to develop new methods of weather modification. For example, scientists are leveraging AI and ML to identify areas where cloud seeding could be used. Recently, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, have been studying the impact of low-cost satellites on weather modification. The goal of the research is to determine if these satellites can be used to modify the weather in order to reduce the effects of extreme weather events such as floods, droughts and hurricanes. The low-cost satellites being researched by NASA and NOAA are much smaller than traditional satellites and can be launched on a much lower budget. This could allow for more frequent satellite launches, providing greater coverage for weather modification efforts. Additionally, the satellites are designed to be able to communicate with other satellites and ground-based systems, which could make it easier to coordinate weather modification efforts across a large area. But then you've got this paragraph. The research conducted by NASA and NOAA has shown that the low-cost satellites could be used to modify the weather in certain areas. So research has shown, so they've been doing it then. It's physically been done according to that statement. For example, the satellites could be used to increase the temperature of the upper atmosphere to reduce the intensity of hurricanes and other extreme weather events. Well, these satellites won't be reloaded with aluminium, silver iodide or any other weather climate modification chemical, which would pretty much only leave the electric charge method, which requires fuel, again. So we'll see how this develops out. But according to this article, NASA has done the research and it has shown that it works. So keep an eye out for high altitude condensation layers. And then you can decide whether it's ionospheric heaters or NASA's satellites. For those of you that are thinking Starlink, that's the sort of size network that you will need to modify the weather on the scale that is being spoken about. You are not wrong to distrust these organisations. So another sentence from this article, weather modification is a complex process and that any efforts must be done responsibly and with caution. So is weather modification done responsibly and with caution? No, absolutely not. No one can guarantee what the outcome will be from it. You can assess what might happen, but there are never any guarantees. MIT Technology Review. There's an article where they've shown the published solar geoengineering research papers from 2009 to 2022 by country. So they're talking about research papers on climate modification if you carry out large-scale climate modification or small-scale climate modification techniques this will affect the weather you get your sunny day will be a white out sky the red arrows there show all the countries in their chart that have active weather modification programs and yes it does include england the black arrow added there for the netherlands it's not clear what Holland is doing, but universities in Holland have, for example, worked on designs for developing aeroplanes technology to carry out solar geoengineering. The purple arrow added at the end there for Sweden. Sweden gave the go-ahead for geoengineering experiments, but they were stopped, cancelled. The plans were cancelled because of the outrage of the Sami tribe in Sweden. And that just leaves Finland, Norway and Denmark from that chart that do not have active weather modification programs. But they're all next door to Sweden. You can ascertain from that chart that we really need to keep an eye on this subject. The twists and turns never stop. So the Rocky Mountain region, Rockies cloud seeding into the USA. Rockies, 
Cloud seeding, a technique to get clouds to produce more rain and snow, is being used more as the Rocky Mountain region struggles with a two-decade drought. So they've had a drought for two decades, but they've been modifying the weather in Colorado, Utah and Wyoming for quite a few more decades than two decades. Are you seeing the consequences of decades of atmospheric moisture redistribution? Probably. The Philippines, from the Philippine News Agency. There's an article, and they state, oftentimes they would be dismayed by the information from the dam's water level, meter reader, that there was no change in the inland lake's water level. This was because there was no assurance that the rains produced by the rainmaking team would fall on the lake itself. Sometimes the rains would instead drench the communities surrounding the vast La Mesa watershed, including the former Novelicia's town proper. So what this person is saying from the Philippines is that even though they were using weather modification to try and fill a dam, it would actually not fall on the lake itself. The rain would not fall on the lake, but would instead drench the communities. Another word for drench is flood. And then they mention about how there was under strict instruction that rainmaking operations done before sunset must be reported before 10 p.m. to be used by the morning papers and radio and television broadcasters the following day. And that's one of the good things about the Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, they all inform their public straight away what's going to happen, when it happens, and what happens afterwards. This is the same in the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, a little bit in America, rarely in Europe. In Europe, it's very much a, don't, please don't notice this, don't speak about it. And Europe has one of the longest running weather modification programs on the planet. As mentioned, specifically Italy, Germany, and you can include France in that as well. Italy and Germany, well into it by the 1940s. Malaysia, there has been a request for cloud season operations to be carried out over the dam water catchment areas in Penang. But be aware, it could miss the lake and drench everyone else. In America's CNBC, Billionaires are fascinated by solar geoengineering, but climate scientists are far from convinced. Which brings us full circle from the start of this video to finishing up with the billionaires being fascinated by it. We know a certain Nigerian person isn't convinced. Personally, I'm not convinced. And hopefully, you're not convinced. We are facing an unprecedented danger to life on Earth from people that want to experiment with our climate or disrupt natural weather cycles with weather modification. Thank you for paying attention. If we're all still here next time, I'll see you next time.